almost getting attacked by snow bunnings out here. <laughs> it's incredible. What an amazing songbird. It's hard to believe that here at the very top of the world that we'd have songbirds. Here on the tundra, we really only have two common species, the snow bunny and the Lapland longspur. Both are ideally suited to living out here in this windswept place. And the snow bunnings are larger than I thought they'd be. And they're also a lot more brazen than I thought they'd be. They come right up into your face when you walk into their territory. Now, this is an unusual bird for a couple of reasons. One reason, it only breeds at the very northern edge of the continent. And this animal's white but it's only white in the summertime. In the wintertime, it turns dark, brownish, smudged white. It's not as clean and crisp and clear as it is in the summertime. That wouldn't seem to make any sense except for the fact that the snow bunning doesn't stay here on the north slope in the wintertime. It leaves and goes south into the northern United States, down as far south maybe as North Carolina in some years, really harsh years. And so he develops that brown and white pattern to match with dirty snow banks and exposed bare areas where he's going to be feeding. The snow bunny wears down the plumage that he gets in the wintertime until it becomes white. During the summertime, he migrates back up here to the North Slope. And in the North Slope this time of year, there's still snow. And that's where you find snow bunnings. One of the other places you find these guys is around people's homes. And here in Barrow, they even put up birdhouses on their homes and feed the snow bunnings because they consider them to be good luck. They're the first thing back in the spring. And when you see them appear, you know that the long dark winter is over. They're the harbinger of spring here on the North Slope. And what a cool bird and what a tame bird.